Okay, today is Monday, March the 10th. I'm about 12 miles west of the Chiracao Summit in Southern California. Uh, that's about another 75 miles to the Arizona border. And um, we have some wildflowers, yellow ones, moving along the highway right now. And we have some purple mixed in over here. Let's go. Side, we have some purple. Let's go over here to this side, take a look. You can see the hillsides, lots of wildflowers. Wildflower season is just beginning, and we probably might come through next month in April. This will be a lot more yellow and purple. Here's some purple right here. We saw some of this in Arizona around San Diego coming out of the I-8. We're right now on the I-10 driving towards the California-Arizona border. The reason why Chiricahua Summit is important is because that's where my grandfather Isaac Javier has a marker at the General Patton Museum. Just in front of the museum is a memorial wall and uh, people can purchase a memorial brick and have it inscribed and we have one brick inscribed for him. My dad bought that for him uh, maybe about five years ago. 2003-ish or so, and uh, oh, here's some purple here. And the reason why he has a marker out there is because uh, when he passed away during World War II, there was no grave marker for him. He is a buried in a mass grave on a high school a lot. His story is that in World War II, he was recruited by General Cunningham in the Philippines to build a runway in the hills around Laguna. And the reason why he was recruited, professionally he was trained as a surveyor. And so he was a perfect person to go recruit to help build the runway. go off there during the weekdays and uh, during the weekends he would come back home to Laguna. Well, I guess one of the Japanese collaborators who was a neighbor found out that uh, he was out there building a runway and uh, informed the Japanese but um, the Filipino town that he lived in being small as it is Everybody knows everybody's business, and he was warned not to go home because uh, people were already looking for him, and that uh, the Japanese would come by and arrest him the moment he showed up. Well, I guess he couldn't um, stay away from, from his family, and he risked going back to town to visit on one weekend, which was I guess his, his big mistake because the moment he arrived in the town, about 15 minutes after he arrived in the town, the you know, Japanese came by and rounded him up and took him to a prison camp. Uh, you know, Japanese prison camps were not necessarily the, the most easiest places to survive. It's a very well known survival rate out of them. It's very, very poor. You know, a lot of people were tortured and killed and starved in, in uh, these prison camps. So I, I kind of imagine that he probably had a very, very rough time in, in this camp. And plus, physically, he was a very, very small person, too. And um, the last time that I thought saw him alive, 
was just before Christmas. I guess Nani Tabat went up to go and visit him. And the closest that she could get was just outside the fence. And uh, she said that she could see into the doorway of the bungalow or bunkhouse or, or a house that he was staying in and just see in the door. And apparently he, there was just one candle burning there. And uh, somewhere behind that candle was my grandfather, Isaac. And that was uh, the last time that not I had you know, seen or heard of him. The story is that that um, towards the closing days of the war, one of the friends that who was looking after him and trying to keep him alive, he was physically a very, very large and very, very strong man. And so he fared pretty well in the Japanese prison camp. Uh, I guess my grandfather didn't uh, uh, fare too well in the camp. But the story is, one night he decided that he, uh, towards the end of the war, the Japanese were very, very disorganized. Uh, the Americans were, were approaching and coming up uh, uh, to, their, to their camp. And so the front lines were moving closer and closer all the time. The Japanese knew it and were very disorganized. And I guess one night, one of his friends who was looking after him decided that this was the night to try to jump over the fence and make a break for it. The story is that my grandfather refused to go. And uh, the story was that at that point, when his friend had decided it was time to leave, here we go. Chiricama Summit, the sign says, four miles in life, California, Arizona, border, 71 miles. But no, we got some purple here along the side now. Back to the story, is that um, the night they decided, he decided that it was time to make a break for it, that he decided, he, uh, he told his friend that he would stay back, because at that point he was too physically weak, and uh, he didn't want to risk uh, his friend's uh, attempt at uh, making it out uh, past the, the, the Japanese guards. So he stayed behind and he just asked his friend that if he made it out, 